Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture of basics of mass transistor in the course of VLSI design. The objective and outcomes of this basics of mass transistor lecture are students will try to learn the basics of mass transistor like the n channel and p channel mosfets that is n mass and p mass transistors and mass transistor symbol mass transistor circuit and it applications like switch and amplifiers they are going to learn and after learning of this lecture students will be able to understand the types of mass transistors and mass transistor symbols and advantages and disadvantages of mass technology and applications of mass transistors etc. The contents of this lecture are it starts with introduction to mass transistor then the mass technology and it covers the types of mass transistors like N mass transistor and P mass transistor and the structures of both N mass and P mass transistors and we are going to see the symbols of both N mass and P mass transistors and applications of mass transistors advantages and disadvantages of mass transistors we are going to see in this lecture and it the FET so MOSFET abbreviation is metal oxide semiconductor field affected transistor and it is a semiconductor device. It is a transistor and it is a device of semiconductor, a semiconductor device. And it is using mostly in the digital design. So it is a most important device in digital design. It is acting as a very good switch. Because of this good switching behavior, it is used in digital design circuits. And it is relatively having a few parasitics. So, therefore, delay is less. And power consumption is also less. And it is having of high integration density. That is, number of transistors per unit area is also more. Therefore, it is having of high integration density. And its manufacturing is simple and economical also because of mass production and it is cheaper for the large complex circuits. And this MOSFET is used in a technology is called as a mass technology. In our semiconductor industry, the names are called as technologies where if mass transistors are used, it is called as mass technology. Like if N mass transistors only used N mass technology and both N mass and P mass transistors used that is called C mass technology or if BJTs are used that is called as bipolar technology and BJTs and C mass if both are used that is called as bi C mass technology. Like that in the mass technology only mass transistor is used and that mass is a given name because of its structure that is metal oxide and semiconductor the structure of metal metal electrode over an oxide insulator over a semiconductor surface that is metal layer is one layer and it is constructed over the semiconducting uh, insulating layer of oxide and it is constructed over the semiconducting layer of silicon. So, because of this structure, because of its structure, it is a given name of mass. And in this mass technology, the user transistors all are MOSFETs only. Its structure is represented by using this figure. See here, this is the one layer of a metal layer, the first layer then oxide layer and then semiconducting layer. It is a semiconducting layer and it is the metal oxide and semiconducting structure. And generally this metal layer is used as either aluminum or polysilicon here and 
Polyn base aluminum is used as a gate. Now polysilicon is using. And this oxide is silicon dioxide is used. And the semiconductor is either N type or P type of silicon substrate is used. And here the source and the drain will be taken from the substrate structure. And uh, the gate is ended with on two ends source and drain parts. Now this is a working on a one principle that is equal to the mass capacitor action, capacitor action because the metal layer and semiconducting layer means both metal layers. In middle, some directric is there that is insulator. So, two conducting plates and dielectric acting as a capacitor action. That action is the electric field on the metal electrode side of the oxide insulator that means electric field on the metal electrode side of the oxide layer is having the effect of effect of the substrate resistance so if i apply a voltage here it affects the resistance of the substrate so resistance of the substrate is going to be affected resistance will be increased or decreased based on the potential applied at the gate terminal this is nothing but the capacitor action using this action the mass transistor is working the in detail working of this mass transistor we will see in the later slides the advantages of mass technology are most of the mass digital ICs are constructed entirely of the MOSFETs. That means the MOSFET will be acting as a transistor or a resistor or a capacitor etc. The same MOSFET can be used as all these active or passive devices. And this MOSFET can also be used as a diode also. That means in the place of each and every component which is used in the circuit that can be realized and implemented with the mass transistor because of this reason total IC is built with MOSFETs. This is the advantage because of the same MOSFET constructed on the floor it is going to save a uh, area and it is going to have the symmetry in the layout. So, design process is simple and fabrication process is simple. So, because of that cost is less and because of that mass production is also possible. So, because of having the only mass fits on the entire chip, it is simple circuit and inexpensive to fabricate. And it is having of high density of the fabrication means more number of transistors can be accommodated and it is having the low power dissipation. These are the advantages of mass technology. So, we are going to see these advantage, advantages are coming because of the using of mass fat transistors. So, we are seeing in detail about this mass fat transistor. Before going to see the MOSFET transistor, let us see the definition of the transistor and types of the transistors. A transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify or switch the electronic signals and electrical power. In the analog applications, it is using as amplifier and in digital applications it is using as a switch and the transistor is always a semiconductor device and it is composed of at least three terminals it is a semiconductor device and which is having of at least three terminals and these terminals are used to connect to the another external circuit now let us see the basic type of the transistors Basically, there are two different types of the transistors. One is bipolar junction transistors and another one is field effect transistors. Field effect 
transistors that is BJT is one type and FET is another type and in the BJT there are two different types of the transistors one is NPN and another one is PNP and in the FET there are again two types those are junction field affected transistor JFET and MOSFET metal oxide semiconductor FET our transistor is this one. So, in the FETs, one kind is MOSFET. Let us see the type of these MOSFETs, type of the MOSFET transistors. So, MOSFETs are having of two types. One is enhancement type and the one is depletion type. And again in the enhancement type, two types of the transistors are there. One is N-channel transistor, another one is channel transistor and in the depletion also there are two types one is n channel and another one is p channel that means in the MOSFET we have four different types of the transistors they are n channel enhancement MOSFET p channel enhancement mode MOSFET n channel depletion mode MOSFET and P channel depletion mode MOSFET. Four different types of transistors are there. These are the practical transistors figures, just figures. The packages are different here. These packages are different. But all are having of three terminals or four terminals. These MOSFETs are having of minimum three terminals and it is having of maximum four terminals. The fourth terminal is bulk. The other three terminals are gate, source and drain. So, some of are with four terminals is represented and some are with three terminals represented. We have seen the types. What are those types? One is a depletion and another one is enhancement. What is the meaning of depletion and what is the meaning of enhancement type? Depletion is nothing but if the channel if the channel is created, if channel is created physically, if channel is created physically, then that is called as depletion mode MOSFET. And enhancement means if the channel is created electrically, if the channel is created electrically, then that is called as enhancement mode MOSFET in the sense at the time of the fabrication itself the depletion mode transistor is having a channel and enhancement mode MOSFET means after fabrication by applying the voltages that is electrically by applying the voltages at the gate terminal the channel is going to be created that is called enhancement mode MOSFET so channel inbuilt is called a depletion Without channel, after fabrication, having the channel with applying the potential is called the enhancement mode. And so, in this again, we are telling the channel, this channel may be of the type NRP. So, if the channel is N type, then that transistor is called as N mass transistor. If the channel is a P type, then that is called as P mass transistor. So, N mass with enhancement and depletion, P mass with enhancement and depletion. Finally, we are having of four transistors. And these MOSFETs of N mass or P mass or enhancement or depletion are used in ICs. And in those ICs, the enhancement MOSFETs only used because depletion MOSFETs are initially acting as the on switches. So, because of on switches, they may be used some power and etc. So, if to avoid all those, only enhancement mass transistors are going to be used in mass ICs exclusively. And these enhancement or depletion MOSFETs modeled as a three terminal transistors those three terminals are one is the gate another one is the drain and the next one is the source 
and if you are using the fourth terminal that is the bulk terminal the fourth terminal is bulk and it is acting like voltage control resistance so MOSFET is acting as voltage control resistance let us see the symbols of the MOSFETs enhancement and depletion and P type and N type the symbols show with a broken line like this are the representation of the enhancement and whereas the symbols of these thick lines represent the depletion. So, MOSFET enhancement transistors with the four terminals are the first set. Then MOSFET enhancement with bubble and without bubble is the second set. This is with the current direction representation of arrow marks the third set and fourth set is the depletion transistors with the four terminals is showing. So, in the first set, the P mass and N mass represents the different arrow directions. This is the P mass transistor and this is the N mass transistor. N mass enhancement, P mass enhancement. Enhancement is representing with broken line of the channel. It is representing the four terminal transistor. Then three terminal transistors of P mass and N mass. N mass is representing without bubble and P mass is representing with bubble because this bubble is representation of the complement whereas N and P both are the complement to each other. Then the next set is representing only three terminals with current direction on the source terminal. So, this is the N mass in this current is flowing from channel to the source outside. And this is the P mass where the current is entering into the channel from the source. All these three sets are representing the enhancement mode transistors. Then it is representation of the depletion mode where this depletion mode represents the thick line for the representation of the physical channel. So, this fourth set will be used for the depletion mode transistor representation for the first set of enhancement mode transistors. Whereas, in these two sets, if we want to represent depletion mode transistors, then extra line is going to be used at the channel part. That is, I am representing like this. These four are originally enhancement. Now, if you want to represent as a depletion, one thick line is used extra here. So, this is the representation of the depletion transistor for the both N mass and P mass with the three terminals with the bubble and without bubble representation. Similarly, so this line is representing the depletion mode transistors. And in the third set also, same arrow mark, but the channel is represented one thick line for the depletion mode. Physical existence of channel is represented with this thick line. This is also depletion mode transistor symbols with the arrow of three terminal transistors. These symbols are used in our different books. So, we are going to use any one of the set for the representation of the circuits. Now, let us see the structure of MOSFET. Before going to see actual three dimensional structure of the MOSFET, just to see schematic structure are uh, the front view of our MOSFET transistor. The schematic structure will look like this that is having a metal layer, oxide layer, and semiconducting layer, three layers. And this metal layer and oxide layer defines the gate area. So, this is the gate. To this gate on both ends source and drain terminals will be used. This is the source and drain. So, this part is representation of the source and this part is representation of the drain. In between source to drain is representing the area called channel. This channel is nothing but a conducting path or a conduction path which is Connecting both source and the drain. A conducting path which is connecting both source and the drain is called the channel. Channel length is representing as L 
and channel width is representing as W that width we can see in the three dimensional model. So the front view or schematic view of the mass transistor will be look like this. Now if you want to write this structure for N mass enhancement and depletion or P mass enhancement and depletion how they will be. Let us see those two structures also. One is the N mass structure, schematic structure of N mass pet for the both enhancement and depletion. This figure is representation of enhancement and this figure is representation of the depletion mode transistor. In the enhancement, we can find the difference between these two here clearly. There is no connection path and here there is a connection path physically. So, this N plus and N plus is joined physically. This is the depletion. Whereas this N plus and N plus is not connected physically, this is the enhancement. So, channel is created electrically here and channel is created physically here. Then, what we are telling channel? Channel is of, in the N mass, channel is of N. So, N channel, here we need to get the N channel by the electrical connection, okay. So, this N channel is connecting of source and drain means source and drain also has to be N. So, N, N, N. Then only we will have some connection. Same one connection path. So, N channel means both source and drain has to be N. Okay. So, N channel means both source and drain has to be N. So, in N mass, source and drain are N plus. This N plus, this plus represents higher doping level. Higher doping level when compared to the channel part. Here also higher doping level is a representation of the when compared to the channel part. The symbol which we have seen already, the enhancement means broken line representation and depletion means thick line representation and four terminals one terminal is gate, another terminal is source, drain and the fourth terminal is bulk substrate. So, four terminals are represented here. The both enhancement and depletion MOSFETs of the N mass type. Let us see the P mass type also. The difference between this and P mass is nothing but the channel is going to be P. So, the channel is P. Therefore, source and the drain has to be P plus. If the channel want to become a P, then source and drain has to be P. So, in P mass, source and drain are P plus, channel is P and channel is physically existing in the depletion mode transistor and channel is electrically, it has to be created. So, there is no channel physically that is enhancement mode transistor. This is the enhancement mode P mass transistor symbol and it is the Depletion mode transistor symbol with broken line and without broken line. And here arrow mark defines whether it is a P mass or N mass. So arrow mark for the P mass is outside to the bulk. This is the symbol. And in the N mass, the symbol is nothing but inside of the. Yes. So now it is correct exactly N mass enhancement and depletion and P mass enhancement and depletion of the symbols. Now, let us see the 3D structure of this MOSFET, 3D structure. This is the 3D structure representation and in this source, drain, gate and oxide and semiconducting layer and then channel area. This is the 3D structure. Same what we have seen in the schematic structure. Same structure can be represented here also. Here we can see extra as a width of the channel or width of the gate. The length of the channel is distance between source and drain and the area under the gate. And so therefore it is called as channel length or it is also called as gate length. Both are equal. And similarly, the width of the gate or width of the channel both are same. That is representation this side. This is the width of the gate. Width of the gate or width of the channel. So, length of the channel and width of the channel. And 
the four terminals one is the source terminal one is the gate terminal one is the drain terminal and another one is the body or bulk terminal here for the gate polysilicon or aluminum is used and for the source and the drain depending upon the transistor type pentavalent dopant or trivalent dopants are used and this is the semiconductor of silicon is taken and then it is going to be doped to the required type whether that if it is required as n and rp the respective doping will be used here the transistor size is defined with channel length and channel width w length is always fixed in the designs and the w can be varied by the designer and gate is made up of polysilicon or metal and w is selectable by the designer l is the minimum feature size bulk connection is used to ground in the n mass and to vdd in the p mass to avoid some problems that is to prevent forward bias to pn junction that is to avoid the leakage this is always either very high or it is very low that means that is acting as high resistance or low resistance in two regions one is on state and another one is off state so on state is defined by the low resistance value and off state is defined by the high resistance value so means to act or to work this mass transistor as a switch in the digital domain using of these two properties very high resistance and very low resistance it will be used as on switch or off switch that is on switch or off switch of either the n mass or p mass transistors are represented here and n mass will be on when the gate potential is logic high and n mass is off when gate potential is logic low for the n mass transistor similarly for the p mass transistor if a gate potential is logic high it will be off and gate potential is logic low it will be in the on condition so on means low resistance off means high resistance high resistance is represented as open connection and low resistance is representing as short connection in both n mass and p mass transistors let's see this switch behavior in detail for the n mass and p mass transistors the n mass transistor acting as a basic switch based on its gate voltage gate applied voltage so this is the n mass transistor this is the gate terminal this is the source terminal and it is the drain terminal based on the vgs value that means the gate to source potential and based on the threshold value of this mass transistor n mass transistor vtn is called as threshold voltage threshold voltage and vn is applied at gate potential that is between gate to source so if vgs is greater than vtn then only n mass will be in the on condition that is vtn is a positive value so when vgs is a positive then only n mass will be on that means for the logic high this will be in the on condition and if vgs is less than the vtn value then n mass will be in the off n mass is off whereas vtn is a smaller positive then lesser value means for the low values or zero values or negative values that means for logic high n mass is on for logic low n mass is off logic high means that is generally it will be represented with positive potential positive potential logic low may be represented with zero volts or negative volts negative volts so for these two cases this n mass is in the off condition off is representing with open switch on is representing with the closed switch let's see that 
So this is the N mass transistor and this is the VGS potential that is a gate to source potential and source is connected the low potential. Now this is on when VGS is for the logic high value. So for logic high value of VGS this transistor is on. On is representing of the resistance of low here for example it is representing as 1 kilo ohms and when input is equal to logic low this is n mass transistor is off or transistor is representing as 10 power 10 ohms so this is a very high value that means representing as open circuit here in the circuit model and low value it is representing as short circuit in the circuit model so n mass is acting as a switch for both values of inputs logic 0 and logic high logic high on switch logic low off switch that is an n channel mosfet or n mosfet is the basic element in a family of devices known as n mass and drain is always passed with more positive related to the source in the n mass and here gate to source voltage VGS is the input voltage which is used to control the resistance between source and drain to control the resistance between source and drain and it determines whether the device is either on condition or off condition that is VGS. VGS determines whether the device is in the on or off and based on the resistance values which we have seen as a circuit. Next, PMOS is also using as a switch. So, PMOS is complementary to the N mass, it is representation. The source, drain, and gate will be represented here. For the VGS, this is the VGS, and VTP is some negative potential. So, whenever VGS is less than of VTN, the P mass will be on, P mass is on or we can tell like this also, VGS, mod VGS is greater than mod, sorry it is P, mod VGS is greater than of mod VTP, this P mass is on. And other condition that is, when VGS is a greater than of VTP or mod VGS is less than of mod VTP, then for these two conditions, P mass is off. P mass is off. Off means open circuit with high resistance, on means low resistance with short circuit. So, when the voltage conditions are satisfying like this, N mass will be on or off. That means when it is on using as a short switch, if it is off, it is using as a closed switch, uh, open switch. Let us see that as a circuit model. This is our P mass transistor. This is the gate terminal and this is the source terminal and between these two potential is VGS and depending upon the VGS and VTN value, this transistor may be on or off. That is for the logic high value of input VGS, the transistor is in the off condition. For logic low, transistor is in the on condition. On means low resistance, it is representing as 10 power 3 ohms and off is high resistance. For example, it is representing as 10 power 10 ohms. So, off is representing as open circuit and on is representing as here closed circuit closed circuit. So, this is the P mass switch. Therefore, P mass is also acting as a switch for both values of input logic 0 and logic i. The same is written here. The P channel MOSFET that is a P mass operates in the same manner as the N channel but with opposite polarity of voltages that is voltages of opposite polarity. And the drain is connected to the lower side of the potential when compared to the source in the uh, source for the P mass circuit and to turn 
the P mass on or off, the voltage is required or to make the P mass on, voltage is required lower than the threshold voltage VTP and to make it off, the voltage required more than the VTP value. That is, voltage at the gate related to the source must be negative to make the switch on of the P mass transistor, which we have seen in the previous slide. So, basically N mass and P mass are acting as a switches based on the input values. Input logic 0, P mass is in on. Input logic 1, P mass is off. Input logic 1, N mass on and input logic 0, N mass off. So, perfect switches. These two are acting as open and short switches. Another application of the MOSFET is MOSFET is used as amplifier in analog applications. So, this MOSFET is acting as amplifier based on its gate potential and current relation. So, by applying a small voltage at the gate terminal, ID will flow, drain current will flow that VGS and ID relation is explained through this figure. See here, X axis is here gate source voltage VGS input voltage and Y axis is representing of ID. For certain voltage of VGS that is less than VTH device is in the off condition, it is representing of N mass, it is the N mass transistor. So, less than VTH of VGS value, the device is in the cutoff, therefore no current. But once after VGS is increased than the VTH, the current is following the this relation. Now, input is applying as VDA, VGS and output is taking as the ID. The gain, the gain is nothing but here GM, delta ID by delta VGS that is also called as transconductance. See for a small change of VGS, for a small change of VGS, there is a large change of ID that will give the amplification action for this MOSFET. Now, by having of this relation, let us apply some another signal here to make it amplification. That is, so along with this VGS to make it switch on, input signal VI is connected, then that VI signal, this is the VI signal, that VI signal is amplified here, this is the output signal. Observe here the magnitude of input value and output value, that is, the change in this VGS, this is the VGS and change in the output current that is equal to this much change. So, output change is higher when compared to the input change, it is called as the amplification part. So, like this, MOSFET can be used as amplifier and MOSFET can be used as a switch and so therefore, MOSFET can be used in digital applications and analog applications. Therefore, VLSA ICs which are used for analog and digital applications can use this MOSFET. Only MOSFET can be used instead of other components also. So, therefore, packing density is more and reliability more and speed is more and power consumption is less for these VLSA ICs which are using the MOS transistors. Now, because of having all these advantages, this MOSFET is used in so many applications, those are applications of MOSFETs are, MOSFETs are used in digital integrated circuits, ICs, such as examples of microprocessors and microcontrollers and these are also used in memories and CMOS logic gates used in microprocessors and microcontrollers used in memories and logic circuits and it is used as switches and these are also used as amplifiers for the amplification purpose and for the oscillators like analog applications. In both analog applications and digital applications, all the applications this MOSFET can be used and this is used in all the arithmetic circuits that means this is used in calculators, computers and etc. These are the applications of MOSFET. The advantages of MOSFET are, MOSFETs provides greater efficiency while operating at 
lower voltages so it can operate with lower voltages and it will give greater efficiency and the absence of gate currents results high input impedance the absence of gate current means because of the structure of mass at the gate that gate is insulated with this is oxide gate is insulated with oxide therefore because of this insulator that gate current is absent because of that gate current absence it results in the high input impedance input impedance is very high and they operate at lower power and draws no current so operate at the lower power and draws the no current therefore it is operating with the lower power it takes the lower power consumption and low power dissipation also and it gives the high packing density because of using the same transistor for all the components and the cost is less that is it is a low buying cost and low manufacturing cost these are the advantages of mosfets and limitations of mosfet only one drawback is there for the mass ic that is its operating speed is less than compared to the bipolar ic's actually its speed is not less but its speed when compared to the bipolar ic's its speed is less therefore these are not going to be used for very high speed applications for very high speed applications only if a speed is only the constraint then instead of mass bipolar is the better and the next one because of getting the more packing density more number of components on the ic the transistor sizes are reducing that is scaling is using for the mass transistors so when scaling is applied when the channel length is reduced 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 then the operation is going to be a problem for that because of the short channel effects and because of the second order effects and etc so the small size of mosfets has created operational problems as producing such a tiny transistors Sin tiny transistors is an enormous challenge when taking a tiny transistor and getting the correct operation without affecting by the short channel and second order effects is the problem for the mass transistor these two are the limitations of the mosfet the summary of this lecture is till now we have seen mosfet introduction mass technology introduction and mosfet to structure and mosfet types of enhancement depletion n mass p mass and then the structures schematic structures and the 3d structure of this mosfet and the applications of this mosfet like a switch and amplifier and we have seen the applications advantages and limitations of the mosfet so advantages and limitations we have seen applications and its switch behavior and amplifier we have seen and the mosfet structures and symbols for both enhancement depletion n mass and p mass transistors with starting with the types of the transistors from bjt and fat we have seen in this lecture i hope you understood this basics of mass transistor in the next lecture we will see the operation of the mass transistor thank you